Hi, this is Meet the Author with host Jason Alster, and tonight our guest is Jim Smith, who wrote a book, Everything You Need to Know to Run a Profitable Web Design Business from Your Home. Jim Smith is an accomplished web designer and trainer who owns a home-based business specializing in website design and hosting. Jim speaks frequently to groups on internet-related subjects. His presentations range from introductory training sessions at local libraries to internet seminars and workshops for Fortune 500 companies. He lives in Amston, Connecticut, and the name of his book, How to Start a Home-Based Web Design Business. Welcome, Jim. Thank you. <coughs> Jim, is this a book on how to build websites? Uh, it's not on how to build websites, it's more how to set up a business uh, surrounding websites. So it's, uh, it's more of a business book than it is a technical book on designing websites. Okay, so like you say, it's a web design business. Right, yep. I see that you're up to the fourth edition in your book. How did you get started as a book author? I um, started back in, actually in 1999, I was approached by a uh, publisher who asked me if I would write a book. I was a web designer. I knew nothing about book writing. So I told them that and they said, well, that's okay. We'll take care of the uh, publishing end of it and you just give us the information. So I decided that I would try it and see what happened and four editions later. <laughs> mm, good for you. I know that you still are an active web developer for small business. It would seem you are giving away all your trade secrets in writing this book. Doesn't that make it difficult when you are helping your competitors? Uh, yeah, actually, when I, when I was first writing the book, I was a little bit concerned about that because I'm basically teaching others how to compete against me. But I realized all the information that I'm giving away is out on the internet somewhere anyway. So um, it's not a problem for me to um, teach others how to develop websites and how to run a web development business. Um, so that brings up a good point. Are the, any of the um, techniques about web development and website building, are any of them your own f that you learned from your own experience, or are these things you researched or a combination of both? I'm more self-taught. Than, than having gone to a, a school of web design or something like that. When I, when I first started web design, there were no such things as schools for web designers. So uh, I, I learned a lot on my own, and that seems to be the, the way I enjoy uh, learning anyway. Mm -hmm. So did you develop your own techniques that you cannot find on the internet, that you put in the book? that someone can say, these are Jim Smith, uh, Smith's techniques? I would love to say there's a lot of secrets that you can't find out on the internet, but mm -hmm. there aren't. There aren't. Well, <laughs> it's, it's very standard. The, the whole thing with web development is that if you get too creative so that nobody else can copy it, then your client is suffering because if, uh, if they want to go somewhere else, it's job security, but it's also unfair to the client. So it'll be hard uh, for them to switch over to somebody right, else. Right, they can't switch over to somebody else if, uh, uh, you know, if somebody's trying to learn what you've done, uh, you know, it's just that, not fair. That brings up a good question we have in other fields of standardization. Uh, do you feel that there should be some sort of standardization with web design? There is a, a, a standard for web design, and a website should be validated, is what they call it. And uh, uh, any time you've got errors on your coding of the website behind the scenes, uh, it's going to affect somebody's browsing experience, somebody's viewing it. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, it should be the code should be validated. Okay. It would seem that this is a bad time for someone to open any business, especially a web design business. Is that an accurate assessment of starting a web design business today? Uh, yes and no. It's actually in the book I, I quoted um, Dickens. It's um, the, the, the 
good, um, let's see, and I can't, <laughs> mine, okay. just, mine just went blank. Um, <laughs> That's okay. It's the best of times and it's the worst, worst of, of times, times. Okay. yes. Um, because right now is the worst time to get into business. So what happens? The people that are in business need to have a good, strong website in order to make more business. So it's the best of times because you can tap into the people who are looking to get into business and help them develop more business, then you win and they win, and that's what business is all about. So it's the, it's the worst of time to be in business, and it's the best of times. Well, I can relate to that also. I can say that as it's harder to generate capital, then you're trying harder by building a website and, and um, putting out more advertising and getting uh, posters out there because you want to get those clients that would be harder to get that you that you would have had easily when business was good. Mm -hmm. I can see that. For someone pace, facing possible corporate downsizing, how should they prepare themselves for setting up a home-based web design business? Actually, when I was first getting into the business, that was my scenario. Um, uh, I was downsized and um, ended up looking around and going, well, I know a little bit about web design, so I'll try it. If you're, our, if you're still working, the ideal situation is to start doing, uh, start moonlighting. Build a website for uh, somebody you know, a uh, nonprofit organization that needs some help. Do some volunteer work. Get a little bit of experience and uh, get your name out there a little bit as well. If you do a couple of nonprofits, you can use those as, an, as examples of what you do. And that's always a, uh, a powerful uh, tool when you're trying to sell people. Here's what I've done, here's what I can do. And um, so, yes, absolutely, you know, uh, set up a plan so that you uh, develop some websites. Along the way, what you're going to find is you're going to find that there are tools that you need. Pick them up while you still have your job, uh, and you can be subsidized to set yourself up. And then when that time, inevitable time comes, when you are downsized, it's not the horrible shock. You know, you just, you transition. Uh, hopefully you get a severance of some sort, maybe not. But uh, uh, go at it gradually. Don't be in a big rush to uh, set up your own business. And uh, once you do, uh, hopefully you'll be ready for it. If, uh, if they surprise you and downsize you before you're ready for it, just uh, jump into it with um, gusto and, and give it a try. What would be the difference between having someone design your website to someone who is not that professional, but they're a little bit computer savvy and they can go and there are free website design programs like uh, Google Sites, mm -hmm. what used to be Google Pages, that are really quite easy, or Yahoo has free websites. Um, what's your feeling about that? Do they, are they don't, are they having something less than if they went to a website designer? They, 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 they certainly have, they, offer? they certainly have something less than, than a professional web designer. Uh, the, the thing that I find is that a lot of these free websites are not quite as easy as they portray themselves as being. And somebody who is busy running their business, they don't have time to deal with it. They need somebody who can hold their hand and walk them through the steps, whether it's on one of these uh, free or low cost websites or a full blown website. Um, I know that, uh, you know, I don't want to sit down and learn everything about their business any more than they want to sit down and learn how to build websites. So give me some examples where somebody who's very business busy with their business and they will call you and say something's wrong with the website that they need to have to retain a retainer on somebody who's doing websites. I've been doing this for almost 20 years now so I get a lot of those types of calls from from 
uh, even other web designers that it's, you know, something's wrong with it. I don't know what. I can't figure out how to make this piece move over to that side of the page. Oh, okay. And uh, so... Give a couple examples. That's also interesting to me. You know, like you mentioned, I've, I've, I've noticed that myself. Mm -hmm. We try to get a photo. It'll go to one part of the page, but it won't go to another part of the page. Um, any other examples? Uh, yeah, a lot of times you'll have uh, a photo uh, overlapping text or vice versa, the text overlapping photos. Mm -hmm. uh, and that will, that will be sometimes hard to diagnose because what happens, and you may have seen it on websites where you look at it and you go, why on earth did somebody ever build a website where the text is hidden behind the, the image, half of it's, I can't read it. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens is they design it looking at it on one uh, browser and one screen size, mm -hmm. and they don't design it looking in different browsers and different screens uh, resolutions. So uh, it may look fine to them, but unless they look at it in different scenarios, they may be surprised when people come up to them mm -hmm. and say, what did you do that for? <laughs> and you mentioned that you have four different uh, versions of the book, uh, reprints. Well, so two questions. Number one, what, would be, what is the difference in the reprints? What new things did you add? And uh, secondly, um, are there, do you have a lot of competition in website design uh, business books, or yours is like the Bible, or there are a lot of books out there? Uh, there are some <coughs> books out there. Mm -hmm. uh, mine's the best, of course. Of course. Uh, <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't be on the show. <laughs> right. But there are, there are uh, other books out there now. When I first wrote this book, it was, um, that, that was one of the reasons for writing it, because I had developed a website business without having any guidance on what to do, how to run a web de design business. Oh, so the actual, the idea of having a business for web designers, that in itself was new. What did people do before that? Well, they had businesses, but they didn't, there were no books. There were no, there was nobody willing to share how they, you know, how do you get customers when you're a web designer? What are some of the tips and tricks? How much do you charge? A lot of different oh, questions. The, the that, business aspect of it. Right. Mm -hmm. that, and it is a business uh, thing. This sure. isn't a, a how to develop websites. This is a how to run a business mm -hmm. uh, on web design. And that's, uh, you know, that was the sharing uh, part of it, that I, I tried to help as many people as I could. And uh, I... You know, through my website, I also write articles and you know blog entries and things like that uh, over time that will help people. When people send me questions, send me some questions. That's fine. So, uh, when people send me questions, I uh, uh, usually try and incorporate that into a uh, article. An article. So that brings up the next point. Um, since you're a web designer, can I assume your book has its own website? If so, well, I did see the website. And so what is the address of it? It's www.homebasedweb.com. You can say that again for our viewers. www.homebasedweb.com. That's H-O-M-E-B-A-S-E-D-W-E-B.com. Right. <clears throat> And, and that has some articles, and it has some information, and I've yeah. reviewed uh, some some other books on there, and uh, hopefully, if I can get this on a, um, a YouTube or somehow, I'll even put a um, copy of this up on the website. That'll be very good. So now that that leads us to our next question. This is an author show, and you were talking about your home based business. So authors today they have to. They're being advised to have a blog to get their name out there on their book or to have a web page on their book. And I've even seen authors uh, selling their um, book themselves as opposed to just putting it on Amazon.com. And then there are people who are monetizing uh, their website because they have blogs. So what information can you give to authors who are putting out a book? Uh, the best way to do a website for authors in addition to come to you. And I know you gave a talk to um, our group 
uh, business networking group for CAP, a Connecticut Authors and Publishers Association. You came as a guest speaker at one time to talk about author websites. What advice do you have? What experience do you have with that? The, the key with authors is get something up there. Uh, if, if all you can afford to do is to just get a one-page uh, website up there, do so. Get something up there. Don't be afraid to take that first step. Once you've got a website up there, add a couple of buttons to it. Uh, a couple of links to other pages, and uh, you know, if uh, most authors are, they love to write. <laughs> that's that's what they're into. So set up a blog. There's some free blogs out there. Google has a, a wonderful free blog. But, uh Yep. I have blogs. That's uh, that's usable, and just every every few days, every few weeks, whatever it is, just go out there and put another article out there, and. Uh, over a period of time, you're going to find that you've got quite a few articles out there. Uh, each of do, those... Well, how do people find these articles? It's nice, okay, you wrote and you wrote and you wrote. Um, how do people get to them? How do you know that people will find them? Uh, it how do you advertise It depends on <clears throat> what, the, uh, what the book is about and what your information is about. If it's a very competitive topic, uh, like uh, credit cards um, uh, information or uh, how to declare bankruptcy, anything personal credit finance card, right now. Fraud, I saw that. On your right, website. those are that. very popular and they're very hard to get listed uh, on the uh, uh, first page of Google with that. But if you know, if if you've got something a very niche market, a very uh, niche book. Uh, a book about the uh, your summer on uh, Chatham, Cape Cod, whatever it is, that type of thing. You, you know, if you write enough about it, you're going to have enough of those keywords embedded in it that it will eventually float towards the top of uh, Google and the other uh, uh, Bing and Yahoo and the other search engines. So, what tricks do you have? I mean, this might be giving away, but you said you give away your secrets anyway <laughs> in the book. <laughs> I give um, them everything. But here you go. Let's do it on the show. You know, <laughs> what um, tricks do you have? And I have some up my sleeve too. I'll discuss right now. But what tricks do you have for getting a higher um, location on Google? Since you brought that up for search, because that's what people are talking about. They're talking about search engine optimization. Right. And by the way, is that different? What you're doing uh, before you answer that question. When you say you're a web design business, is that different than search engine optimization, or that's included? That's part of my business. Of I business. do I do full service web design development. Uh, I do everything from hosting, taking care of domain names, uh, search engine optimization, uh, web design, graphic design development, anything that a customer needs. Uh, I'll be glad to take care so of. So it's actually a serious business. It's not just building the website. It's doing the optimization, it's hosting it, it's a whole lot involved there, fixing it if there's something wrong. Right. I remember one time in one of the meetings you mentioned something about a server falling and the person lost their website or something like that. Yeah, they, they, they lost their website. Their, uh, the company that was hosting or taking care of their website, uh, they, that server, big computer, crashed. And the company didn't have any backups of any sort, which astounded me. Wow. Uh, Anything can happen. Yeah, so they lost every bit of their work and they had to reconstruct it uh, pretty much from scratch. So it can happen. And that's, you know, that's kind of the other part of making sure that you're dealing with somebody who's reliable and uh, can take care of things like that because um, otherwise disasters happen. And how can someone uh, monetize before, you know, well, we'll get back to the, in a couple of minutes that we have before the end, to how to optimize search to get a little bit higher. But how can someone monetize the website? If they're an author, they're giving out information in their blog, and they're working, and I'm sure they want to sell their book. But are there tricks to monetizing any of that? A couple of things come to mind, three things come to mind. One is that you can become an affiliate of different companies that offer things. I've got a, uh, oh. an, af an affiliate site out there where uh, how to build your summer house uh, is one of them. That's and I've got a uh, web page on uh, 
uh, setting up backyard privacy fences. So can you explain? I know what affiliate is, and you people were affiliates with Amazon.com, but in Connecticut, they sort of stopped that because of the tax law. But um, can you explain about the affiliate? That's correct. That, and you just reminded me of that. Yeah, an, a, an affiliate is if um, if somebody has products and they <clears throat> want me as a uh, uh, website holder to put ads for them on my website and try and sell their products, then I sign up as an affiliate. And if you go to my website and you click on something like, uh, you know, I, I mentioned the privacy fences, you know, if you click on one of those build-it-yourself kits, you go to the site where the guy is offering those things, you know, if you spend two or three hundred dollars buying a privacy fence from him, then I get uh, anywhere from five to ten to fifteen percent hmm. of whatever those sales are. So how did you get some of your affiliates? Did you contact them? They contacted you? Um, Commission Junction, look it up in Google. Uh, Commission Junction is one of the stronger affiliate programs, and they have a huge assortment of products that are available. And um, that's that that's one of the uh, one of the biggest ones that's out there. You mentioned um, Amazon. Uh, in here in Connecticut, the problem is that Amazon kind of shut us off. You know, yeah, I had a lot of links to Amazon, and they, because of the tax laws here, it just became too complicated for them. So they said, well, you can sell our books, but we're not going to give you a commission. So, you know, everybody pulled their... <laughs> yeah, so you can have your link to your book page, but it used to be you, or you got an additional 5% or up to 5% if someone actually bought your own book from your website. Right. The other, uh, another way to monetize your website is to put Google Ads up there. And uh, if you go to um, uh, AdSense, uh, it's either AdSense, I think it's AdSense.Google.com, but just search for AdSense mm -hmm. on Google and you'll find it very easily. Um, I you can had actually. Luck with that for some reason. Maybe I'm sorry? I, I said I actually tried that. And I haven't um, earned that much on Google AdSense. The I'm problem wondering. that I was going to say with AdSense is, first of all, uh, they won't send you a check until you get up to $100. Right. And I'm at 60 for a couple years already. Well, I, I had one site up there for four or five years, and it had $1.25 <laughs> on it. <laughs> so it, it took a while, but now I... I uh, do a lot more with it, so it mm -hmm. makes it you know uh, makes it a lot more sense to do it that way. But if you you know you have to have a lot of traffic to your website in order to to said, make um, some money on that. Somebody who has a type of business where there is a lot of traffic, sort of like um, selling uh, vacations, mm -hmm. they they get a lot of uh, or airfares, air travel, they get a lot of traffic. Those type of websites do good on something. Yeah, like you can put some Google ads on there, and you you know when people click on it, Google gives you like sixty percent mm -hmm. of whatever they make on it. So if um, if somebody clicks on an ad and uh, Google charges uh, two dollars for that click, then you get uh, sixty percent of that. So mm -hmm. uh, you know doesn't seem like much until you leave it out there for months and months, and the traffic is rolling through there, and the money starts rolling in. And any other um, things that come to mind about getting up there with search engine optimization? I can give an example. One of the things I do that surprised me is I also make book trailers for authors, video book trailers. And there was somebody who had a um, book on, uh, what's it called, um, recycling. And I made a YouTube video for that. And when someone did a search on recycling, uh, that, that video put them way up there in Google because they had a video on YouTube. So the fact that they had a video about their book on YouTube put them at a very high level, right under Disneyland, hmm. who didn't have a video on recycling. <laughs> uh, not, not at that time. So I, was, uh, I saw that having a video at YouTube gives you a high... Uh, 
placement on Google. Do you have any information about that? Now, was that, and then that linked back to your website? No, it wasn't <coughs> my website. I have uh, my own Google channel, uh, my own YouTube channel. Oh, okay. And uh, I put that, you, but I think what it was is that there was not too, there were no other videos on the subject of recycling. Mm -hmm. And therefore, because they made a video out about a book for children to learn about recycling, and I put it on YouTube, then that word on YouTube got the book at second place if right. you did a search on the word recycling. Yeah. Yeah, one of the one of the uh, the strongest ways that you can build traffic up to your website is known as backlinks, where uh, links are put back to your website, and that's why I was asking if you had a link to your website. If you know of somebody who has some strong traffic, and you can get them to link to your website, and in that link, that text. It has something related to your website. In other words, on my uh, home base web uh, book, if I have somebody who's got a lot of traffic, tie it in with an article on home base web design, and then that link says home base web or home base web design, and then it links to me. Uh, Google tends to elevate my website because of that. Because of its link. Uh, other it's got to have some relationship there. It can't just be, you know, some people have what they call link farms where they just put their website out everywhere and uh, that doesn't that doesn't work. That's not nearly as strong. Uh, in fact, it can hurt you. But find ones that are specific that are targeted to your website so, and that'll help. Uh, are you doing that with any of the people who are Ha um, having you design the websites? I do a lot of that mm -hmm. with, with clients. That's and an, um, another part of the business. Right, mm -hmm. right. Uh, you know, and that's all part of search engine optimization is going outside of the website, pulling traffic into the website. Mm -hmm. um, are you going to write another book? Um, I think you said you were, you were thinking of writing Well, and that, that's part of that uh, monetizing a website. Uh, the next thing is to write e-books. Oh, so talk uh, about that, that are that are small books surrounding uh, the the major topics. So I may write one on my uh, web design uh, website on how to uh, sell e-commerce sites. You know, just a very niche, a smaller niche within. Mm -hmm. And uh, it'll be a separate book or another. Right, chapter? it would be a separate book, uh, but it wouldn't be a hard copy. It would just be an e-book. Uh, mm -hmm. Doesn't cost can much you, of anything. Can you monetize an ebook like in, like we talked about with the um, AdSense and the other things? You go to e junkiecom and you can set up a, uh, a link uh -huh. so that you can uh, you can sell that book. Uh, mm -hmm. They'll they'll take care of the uh, credit card processing and everything. You just mm -hmm. set up an account with them, and they get a little you know percentage of it. You can have affiliate links everything so that's another way to make some money on it wow so one of the things we do towards the end of the show is we have the guest the author sign you know put a signature in the book there you go and um, I do this because I noticed that people who like to read books and they go to author signings it's entertaining and they like the idea that the author signs a book to them and they'll go to meet the author and get a signed copy. And that's very important for the people. Uh, and we have about a minute left. Do you um, have anything else you want to say in general about uh, web design, yourself? Web design business is fun. I love it. It's, uh, it's nice because I get to go into different businesses. It's never boring. It's never uh, the same drag. Uh, I get to look into to a lot of different small businesses and find out what their needs are and how I can help them. So it's a it's, very it's wonderful. It's very interesting you say that. Um, a lot of people who have jobs where you think they might be sitting behind a computer and it's boring, and then when you talk to them, they say no. It's actually very interesting because they do get to see other businesses. Um, you're helping or, businesses grow, and yeah, that's what it's all about. And you feel that you're doing something important. <coughs> that's very good. Mm -hmm. Well, in the last couple of minutes, I'm just going to, I was so impressed with this book, you know, just leaf through it, 
give the readers or the viewers, if they can see it, we're all done. Well, thank you, Jim, for being on the show. Thank you. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I had a lot of fun, too. Great. We'll probably be over in a minute. <laughs>